how can I ask God, heal me of these bee stings, and I keep putting my foolish face in the hive? Amen. Got my face right in the tree, getting stung, face getting swole, and while I'm getting stung, Lord, deliver me. <clears throat> Lord, deliver me. Ouch. Lord, help me. Ouch. Now, Many of you are so overzealous, you think the voice of the Lord has to tell you every little thing. The word of God says, do not nature itself teach you some things teach you some things not only that if the minister is ministering to you the bread of life the word of wisdom the book of deliverance this is the place to secure what's broken how do you expect to be spiritually mended if you won't subject yourself to the book When I was a child, I thought as a child. And I remember I had a red bike. You know, back in the 70s, those bikes, the tires don't flat. That's right. You can ride over nails, bottles, and, and people. Them, them tires was that hard rubber. And I remember I was riding my bike and pedaling fast and a friend of mine got in behind me and pushed me out to a wide street at the end of my mother's street Old York Road and the chain came off and I was sitting there on my bike next to the curve and the tractor trailer in fact I was about seven years old and I remember that as if it was last night the man was drunk and an 18 wheeler tractor trailer came up Old York Road he was bumping his horn I went into a state of shock and just sat there and couldn't move he was so drunk the truck was coming up like a snake and when he came and made that bend the whole grill hit my body but the hand of God was with us not one bone was broken and I was hit head on my bike was totally like a pretzel I didn't have no broken bone I only had a knot on my head once in a while Bowser teased me he said that's what that truck did to you sometimes our parents tell us don't do this don't do that but because we are stubborn, we do what we're told not to do. And then once it's done, we look for the one that told us not to do it to bail us out. The Bible says, he that hath the ear to hear, let him hear. Why would you ask God to deliver you from evil, yet you refuse to separate yourself from the evil? That's right. You that are here, you that are watching. Amen. You may smoke, have it, struggling with it. But if you want to overcome it, you got to disassociate yourself from your smoking friends. Right. You that got a drinking problem. And I look down upon no one. And I want you that are here and you that are watching. When you hear me preach against this because the Bible says cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh and of the mind right away you indict me and say that man uh, he, he thinks somebody's supposed to live holy overnight. No. But ask yourself if why would you be a slave to liquor dope 
prostitution. If you want to be a slave, let God be your master. And God will make you a real man. That's right. And a real woman. That's right. Go back to the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Everybody all right? Back in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 12. Follow me. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Sometimes a person complains and says, you know, that person don't show no concern. Before you indict them, consider they may not know how. And before you indict them, maybe they are overwhelmed with things themselves. That's true. That take me back to what I was about to say earlier. If you go to a person to lay your burden on them, brother and sister, and if you know you cannot handle the burden they put on you, tell them, before they start talking. That's right. Tell them, look, look, brother and sister, I mean no disrespect. I want to be there for you, but I'm overwhelmed myself and I can't handle what I'm dealing with. That don't mean they're not your brother or sister, and that doesn't mean they don't want to be there for you. It's best that they be honest because they may be in emotional debt themselves. Well, Pastor Jennings, we're supposed to be there for one another. But you have to know how to be there for the other. That's right. Everybody don't know how. In the hood, they tell each other, hey, yo, I got your back. Well, if somebody from the hood said you got your back, you're looking for him to know how to mix it up if need be. That's right. But if you say, I got your back, and then some guy is going to jump me, and you running up, ah, going to hit the guy. Ah, oh. Oh. You ain't got my back. No. The true manifestation of being there for one another, you got to have knowledge of how to deal with with the troubles of another but you can't have that knowledge if you haven't yet mastered how to deal with your own self that's right some of us can't handle ourselves amen. are you listening amen brother paul said what for as the body is one and as, as many the body members, is one and as many members and have a whole lot of members and all the members of that one body being many are one body mm -hmm. so also is Christ all right for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body everybody gonna come into the body of Christ the same way that's right you have to be baptized by one spirit and ain't talking about water baptism and the name of Jesus Christ is talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking another tongue. That's right. The church by the Lord Jesus Christ, Pastor Jennings can't put you in, Bishop Ellis can't put you in, Pastor Teller can't put you in, Elder King can't put you in, Bishop Ferguson can't put you in, no man can put you in. This is God's church. That's right. And only he can put you in his church. And proof that you're in there, you got the spirit of the living God as they did on the day of Pentecost. If you never speak in tongue, you've never been baptized with the Holy Ghost in that with fire. I want you to hear, Amen. hear what the Holy Ghost said. For by one spirit, by one spirit, are we all baptized into one body? And whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Wait a minute. So it's not just for Jews. No. It's for everybody. That's right. Jews and every other ethnic group. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Be quick. Whether we be bond or free. And have been all made to drink into one spirit. For, for the body is not one member, but many. You hear that? Amen. There's several thousands of followers 
of the truth of God message. That's, right. That's in the body. Many. Many. I had a preacher come to me and say, well, you know, Pastor Janice, Jesus, when they were selling in the temple, Jesus beat them out the church. I said, no, he didn't. He said, why you say that? I said, the church didn't even start until the day of Pentecost. That's right. I said, Jesus was the example for the church. The temples back then were synagogues where Jews gathered. There wasn't no church. Now, God will beat you. Sometimes people have left first church because they say, I don't have no love. Why? I won't give them the attention that they used to from other preachers. I'm paying attention to the most important thing you have, your soul. I'm paying attention to the most important thing you have. Some people say, Pastor Dennis, I, I want time with you. I've been trying to get to you for five months or a year. Uh, and I left the church because I can't talk to you. Well, I'm glad my wife don't think like that because she be trying to get to me. <laughs> Sometimes my wife say, you're gone again? I say, I'm gone again. She say, when are we going to have time? I say, girl, I know. Give me some time. We'll, we'll get some time. She said, don't think I'm fussing. I said, that's all right. If you fuss about that, I understand because even I fuss about it. When God make you a preacher, he takes you from everything. God take you from everything. I've missed many months and years watching my children grow. I remember leaving home when they was crawling and didn't come back, they walking. I would love to see that. That's right. Amen. I wish I could undo it. Yes. That's right. Amen. Sometimes I tell my wife, I don't want to be a preacher. I don't want to be no preacher. I have more anger about it than appreciation. The reason why I do, because I understand what it consists of. So when men are eager to get up here, they don't know what they want. I'm nobody hypocrite. That's right. I love the word of God, but many times I hate my job. Not don't like it, hate it. Is that Bible? Yes. Those things that I hate, that do I. <laughs> That's what the Apostle Paul said. That which I hate, that do I. For that which I do, do you hear? In the book of Romans chapter 7 and at verse 15. That which I do. I allow not. I allow not. For what I would. What I would. That do I not. That do I not. But what I hate. What I hate. That do I. That's right. We have been traveling 35 years. 2019 will be 35 years of travel non-stop non -stop. most men when they get older things slow down mine is in total reverse that's right Lord, take God the thing is getting larger and larger and larger pray for your brother or right. take God I want to be around Hallelujah. alive when Jesus come here Hallelujah. The greatest message that is in the 21st century is be holy. Be holy. It is the finest representation of God. That's right. What did the Apostle Paul say? Back in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 14. Be quick. For the body is not one member but many. Yes. If the foot shall say. If the foot shall say. Because I am not the hand. I am not of the body. Hold it. The foot need the hand, and the hand need the foot. That's right. If your feet itch, 
your elbows ain't made to scratch it. Get them hands. Get all between your toes and heal. That's right. Are you listening? But if you have no feet, no legs, then where can the hands go? The whole body struggle. That's right. Let me give you knowledge. In the book of Revelation, John saw Jesus riding, glory to God, on a white horse written upon his thigh. What's the word of God? Written on his thigh. Now the body is the temple. The thigh, the legs are the pillars of the temple. For the song of Solomon said, her thighs are like pillars. Why would the word of God be written on Jesus' thigh? Because he supports the body, he supports the church. Notice, Sansom did not go to no other location of the temple. Give me the pillars. That's right. That the whole temple stand on. That's right. The church by the Lord Jesus Christ stand on Jesus Himself. Amen. That's why He said, He said, upon this rock. That's right. Oh, we take God, I build my church. Amen. And again, hallelujah. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. That's right. The word is written on his thigh. Written on his thigh. The word of God. He supports the body. That's right. He supports the temple. Mm -hmm. huh? Amen. Go back to Corinthians, huh? If the foot in back in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 15. Everybody all right? Come on. If the foot shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Now. Because I'm an overseer, that don't mean I don't need you. That's right. I'm a member of the body. That's right. Christ is the head. Christ is the head. And all of us are members. That's right. And all of us are valuable. That's right. And all of us are important. That's right. You cannot respect a person if you don't respect yourself and sometimes we can't value what we can't understand that's true sometimes we're too quick to judge someone we don't understand them you know there's some folk if they don't there's some sisters they don't talk much in church very quiet right away a fool judge them they think she's all that she thinks she's cute she thinks she's this you can't satisfy them and then you got another sister always talking. Super califragilistic, espialidocious, wah, 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 wah. You can't satisfy them because then they say you talk too much. People look at us on television and look at my face and think I'm the meanest man on the planet. Because they don't know us. Some members in First Church, when they come and talk to me in the office, shaking. I look at them and just shake my head. Pastor Jennings, I'm scared. Sometimes I feel like just saying, ah. <laughs> Glory to God. Make it take off running. Most overseers are high minded, arrogant, self righteous, and they do not have the attitude of a brother because they have a king-like mentality and look at you as nothing but surrender servitude. That's right. God have made us a humble brother. Many men have lied and said, you can't talk to Pastor Jenner. Yes, you can. You can talk to me. Amen. You can talk to me about anything. But I don't come to me looking for me to tell you what you want. Glory to God, I'm going to tell you what the word of God said. Amen. I have to do that. 
because I'm determined to stay on God's side. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Listen good. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, uh, is it therefore not of, of the body? The only thing that makes you not of the body is when you don't follow the rules and regulations of the body of Christ. That's right. The Holy Ghost puts you in the body, but now there's a doctrine to govern the body. We have, we have the new book of bylaws. They're finished. The first book for, that was revised 2006 maybe had 50 or 60 pages. This one have about 193. This will eliminate a lot of folk keep asking the same question. And this will help new people. I want to say, why you do that? Because a lot of folk can't understand the Bible when they try to read it. So we put together rules and bylaws centered around doctrine where folks can be governed. Not trying to lay no burden on you, but we want you to be the best representation of God. The best. Mm -hmm. right. Read fast because I have to get Matthew right. and Corinthians. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Uh -huh. If the whole body were an eye. If the, wait a minute. Amen. Now my wife and I have seven kids. <laughs> God knows if my oldest daughter would have came out one big eye. Eye. Yeah. Looking. I would have tried to figure a way either to put it back or run. Do you hear this? Come on, son. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am, I am not of the body. Uh -huh. Is it therefore not of the body? Yes. If the whole body were an eye. The whole body was an eye. Where were the hearing? Where is the hearing? If the whole were hearing, do you see how the Bible's yes, using the natural physical body, showing you the importance of the role that each member play? That's right. Do you see what I'm telling you? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If you have people that are honest, sincere, and their agenda is right to be a help in the church, but your agenda got to be right. I got That's to put right. that in there. You know, become some, some folk got the wrong agenda. They want to work in the church to get close to you. Well, you should be working the church to get close to Jesus. In church, you're supposed to be all about God. Amen. Are you getting me? Amen. All about God. The church through the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't revolve around Pastor Jennings. The church by the Lord Jesus Christ revolve around Jesus himself. He died for it. I didn't. He shed blood for it. I didn't. He's coming back for it. I'm not. If I die, the church will still be here. Huh? Glory to God. I want you to get this. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Where is the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the where smelling? Is the, where is the what? Where were the smelling? Imagine your wife birthed a 12 pound, 8 ounce nose. <laughs> <laughs> Name that thing Snorky. Snorky. <laughs> the Bible points out each member. How it's not a body if the member exists alone. alone. You can't call it a body if the member exists alone. So you viewers who says I'm having church by myself at home. No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. No. You have to be in the body. That's right. You're just an eye or a nose or a finger, a member. If you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Ghost, and you got to be attached to the body. That's right. 
Glory to God. That's right. And but now God has set the members, every one of them in the body. Wait a minute. God had set the members. Geno Genesis did it. God had set the members. Geno Genesis did it. God had set the members. God had set the members. Every one of them in the body. For what reason, Williams? As it has pleased him. Amen. 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 Jesus, I don't like her. I didn't tell you to like her. I told you to love you one another. Love one another. That's right. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. That's what Solomon said, I give you a good doctrine. I hope you get this. Pastor Dennis, I was looking for a fiery <laughs> message. That's right. Fire. This is fire right here. Fire. Amen. Let the fire of the word burn out all unrighteousness in you. That's right. When you hear the word of God, don't look at nobody. Amen. Absolutely nobody. Ask God to deliver you from your jealousy. Ask God to deliver you from, from your hatred. Ask God to make you strong and not weak. That's right. Ask God to help you overcome. Ask God to help you not to backslide. Go ahead. Hallelujah. Are you listening? Amen. Real quick. But now God has set the members, every one of them, in the body yes. as it has pleased him. Mm -hmm. And if they were all one member, where there were it is. And if they if were they all imagine one member. Imagine an eye with toes under it. As I said, my wife and I have seven kids. Imagine that my first daughter was a big eye. Sierra was an ear. Oh, my goodness. Oh, great. Ernie was a chin. Jordan was feet. Reds was a knee. You know he would need plenty of lotion. <laughs> Persia was a hand. Oh. And Brother Malcolm was a lip. A 12-pound lip. Oh. I ain't taking you outside. <laughs> we, ain't, we ain't going nowhere. No, nowhere. <laughs> Amen. If I do take you out, I'm going to put you in a stroller where everything is so hidden. Nobody would know what it is. That's right. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, shame to you before my Father which is in heaven. Amen. Now let me work on the Lord's Supper. Now in the book of St. Matthew, Because we're looking to serve the Lord's Supper tonight. And I want you to think and examine yourself. Amen. Or it take God to see are you in the faith or not. Amen. All right, get me. Matthew chapter 26, we'll start at verse 17. Uh -huh. Now the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, go into the city to such a man and say unto him, the master is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Yes. And pointed them. My, my brother microphone is dying. I can't afford to have that. Amen. If you got another one with a battery, do it. Or... All right, come on. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Yes. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the, with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you. Now, as they did eat, Jesus, one thing about Jesus, he know when to bring something you need. That's right. Listen. 
And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. that one of you shall betray me. Wait a minute. You always will have traitors. Traitors. I believe the Holy Ghost said to the apostle, he addressed that in the, about the last days. Right. And one of the things were traitors. Traitors. Heady. High minded. Amen. If Jesus was betrayed, ain't no need for you to get all broken up and I ain't coming to church because I was betrayed. You ain't, listen, you are not supposed to be coming to church for anyone but you. And this is where so many of you had made a mess. You don't come to a convention to shop for a wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't come to a convention to shop for a husband. I don't care the smell of his perfume or his cologne is so good when you walk by it. A little hand of cologne form and lift you by the chin and just carry you down Fifth Street. Arms just flowing. Oh, that take God. But then make sure no cars hit you. We come to church for the wrong reason. We don't come for fashion display. Holy Ghost talk about fashioning yourself after this world. That's right. Amen. We don't come to even concern ourselves who look better than who. Who's looking at me? I want you to get me. Amen. If you come to the house of God for any other reason, you're wasting time. Brother Solomon says in the fifth chapter of Ecclesiastes, mm -hmm. keep thine foot when you go to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools because they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thine mouth, nor be hasty to utter anything before the Lord because God is in heaven. Thou art upon earth, therefore let thine words be few. He's, he, he put discipline on that mouth. Right. And the Bible compares the word to a bit. Though it take God in the horse's mouth. That's right. Everybody all right? Yes, Listen. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Now, a backslider yeah, can't take the Lord's supper. No. Because you left God. You abandoned him. That's right. I didn't say a backslider that backslid and came back. Yeah. If you're a backslider and you're still out there and just happen to come to church, you can't take the Lord's Supper because you're a traitor. That's right. A traitor is one that backslide depart from the Lord because they said, Lord, I'm going to stay with you. I'm going I'm to serve you if you do such and such a thing. Well, Pastor Jennings, things just happen. <sighs> Coming to God and staying with God, always remember, it's a choice. Leaving God, always remember, it's a choice. In other words, how can you say this brother made me backslide? The brother didn't make you get saved. Salvation comes from God. How can you say, oh, the sister made me backslide? Backsliding, leaving God is a choice. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, a sign of weakness is one that don't want to endure nothing. That's right. But the holy word of God says all are partakers. That's right. 
If you, everybody are partakers of suffering. Everybody. Everybody. Because their bro the brothers are servants of God, we're going to go through plenty. In fact, in many cases, we go through things that you won't. Right. Amen. As many things I go through, none of you will. My position brings it on me. That's right. Yes, my position. Paul's position calls that messenger of Satan to buffer him. You don't read where Titus and Gaius and Timothy was buffered by no devil. But the apostle Paul said, God let him know because of abundance of a revelation. A messenger of Satan come along and buffered him. Buffered him. And then the apostle explained why the Lord did it to him. That's right. He gave Satan permission. Right. Why, Paul? I gave you revelation. I gave you knowledge. So I got to do something to you. I'm not going to allow your life to be sweet. All cotton candy. I must let a messenger of the devil and give him permission. Get my servant Paul. I don't want him to think he's too strong. Too powerful. It ain't got to experience nothing or go through nothing because the Lord know he got it in the word. Knowledge buffered him up. And Paul had a messenger of Satan to buffet him because of the abundance of revelation. That's right. He had to keep him down. A lot of folks think I'm exalted. I don't pay them no mind. Thank God they don't know what God dumped on me. It, it, hallelujah. It, it keeps me down. Amen. Hallelujah. It keeps me down. Amen. I want to stay at the feet of Jesus. I, I, I want to stay there. That's right. And I ain't trying to stay there. I'm gonna stay there. Amen. Wonderful. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Knowledge puffeth. Up. And I know God has blessed us with an abundance of revelation and still doing it. Bless God and I also know why he's allowing me to go through certain things. Keep me on my knees. Keep me talking to him. Keep me fasting and praying. Call, hallelujah. Calls me not to think I'm higher than I ought to think. Let me still see I'm human. Don't let me. I, I'm not in the spirit 24 hours a day. You see, a lot of you look at Pastor Jenny like he's Superman. No, I'm not. I ain't no Superman. I'm just a humble man. That's right. Well, Pastor Jenny, God deal with you all the time. I think you know everything. You putting too much on me. That's right. Only one know everything is God. I have to bring myself under subjection. Lest I be a castaway. That's right. I got to pray, Taylor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got to fast. I got to plead and ask God to help me to overcome. Yes. Even, hallelujah. Glory to God. Go ahead, brother. Even I got to go to God to repent. I never, I never let my day close without asking God for repentance. Even if I felt like I didn't do nothing, I want to stay safe. Hallelujah! I want to stay safe. Do it, thank God. Hallelujah! Do it, Hallelujah! Anytime you think you above repentance, you are the seed of your father, the devil. That's right. Amen. Even the, even the apostle Paul repented. I believe he went to the church to, uh, in Corinth and said, forgive me of this wrong. He ain't say what it was, but he knew. That's right. Thank God. So I, I understand that scripture. An abundance of revelation. 
put a thorn in your side. What was it? I don't know. The Bible never said what Paul thorn was. No. Here's a man that dared angels to come from heaven and preach any other gospel that different from what he preached. God got to do something to that man. That's right. Before that man thinks he's equal to God. That's right. God put something on him. Yeah. Let you know you need me. You need me. You need me. I can replace you. I put in the word, let another die and another take his office. Glory to God. Wonderful. Are you listening? Amen. Come on, son. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Yes. And they were exceeding sorrowful. Uh, hey, have you betrayed God tonight? Hmm. Judging. Amen. What is betrayal, Pastor Jennings? When God tell you not to do something and you do it. So that means all of us have betrayed God in so many ways so and so many, many forms. Yeah. That's why, listen, if you only understood the value of repentance, don't you take that thing for granted and abuse it. Repentance is the thing that gives you a clean slate, but you better not take it for granted. That's right. Your way back to God is through repentance. That's right. Hallelujah. Your way back to God is repentance. That's right. Hallelujah. Don't be too proud. Don't be too arrogant. Don't be too old. That's right. Don't be too cute. Don't be too young. Now, you may go before God and say you humbled yourself by getting on your knees. This is the appearance of humility. See, my knees can be bent, but my heart is uplifted. That's right. And Jesus said, it's your nigh to me with their mouth, but their heart far is far from me. Far from so in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. Oh, this is an old-fashioned, soul-stirring message. Yeah. If you see a sister and her dress shorter than, shorter than yours, leave her alone. Leave her alone, Pastor? Yes. Let her work on herself. Because if she make it longer just because you said something and her heart is not convicted, when she's not in church, it's going right back up. That's right. That's right. Yeah, man. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto time, time you. we got new sisters that got, they can't, I've seen new sisters. When they first came in, their earrings was huge. Yeah. You don't go to no sister. I don't care if they've been coming five or ten years. Yeah. We don't wear that here. Leave her alone. In other words, stop trying to do the job of the word of the Lord. People write me by the thousands. Pastor Jennings, women. I wear pants. I wear jewelry. I wear makeup. Can I still come to church? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, pants wearer. Come on with your little lips all painted. Listen, if your earrings so big, it's about big as the Bible, and they have you bent over, dragging the floor, leaving scuff marks. Come on in here. All I'm going to do is preach the word. You leave them alone. I believe God knows how to clean them up better than you do. While they're still striving to overcome, they're not on the choir with earrings and 
They're not working in auxiliaries with all that stuff. They're not setting, they're not doing nothing because they need to overcome the hindrances of self. Go ahead. For you know what the earrings were. Well, from that side. That side. That side. It just gets so small, it's like a mole in her ear. Why? She's doing it precept upon precept. Line upon line. Know how to treat the sinner when they come in. Don't let the sinner be standing around and y'all see them right around you and you more focus on each other. Greet that sinner. I was in the Bahama Islands and with my older brother, Bishop Ferguson. And uh, we went back to the hotel from service. And there was a woman, beautiful sinner, all dutied up. It was outside drunk. <laughs> when I got off the van, Huey was with me to walk me to my room. When I got off the van, was about to go in the hotel. She had her liquor in her hand. Much bigger than this. She looked at me. Hey. <laughs> she said, I know you. I was just watching you yesterday on YouTube. She said, can, can, I, can I talk to you? She told the doorman, oh, my liquor. She said, I can't talk to this man with liquor in my hand. Most preachers wouldn't give her the time of day. Remember where God brought you from. He said, I'm a Rastafarian, and he said, but the things you preach I never heard before you. Just wow. She said, you're so bold. He said, you down here in my home. You. I said, why don't you come to church tomorrow? She said, where is it? I said, ask the bishop there that's driving the van. I said, go to him. She said, I will. She said, you know what? You all right. <laughs> Someone who don't have no love or see me talking to a drunken woman, take pictures, upload it on YouTube, and say, Pastor, Den Pastor Dennis is hanging out with drunken women. Yeah. They jumped on Jesus because he was talking to harlots. That's right. Thank the Lord. That's right. We have a gospel that can reach anybody. Reach him, reach him, reach him. All right, come on, Wims. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Yes. And they were exceeding sorrow. You that have backslid, mm -hmm. you need to come back to God tonight. tonight. And even if you come back to God tonight, don't take the Lord's Supper. We encourage you to have the Holy Ghost for you to take the Lord's Supper. These preachers tell you, well, once saved, always saved. You can never lose the Holy Ghost. You didn't always have it. Right. 15 chapter, 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles 15, we'll start at verse 1. Says what? And the Spirit of God came so upon... So I said, wait a minute, Pastor Jennings, why is that? Let me give you some wisdom. They can still be struggling with liquor. If I give them that wine, that liquor, tasting them may be worse. So I got to use good judgment. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. A person just come out the world and come back to God, I'm not going to give you the Lord's Supper. I'm going to teach you how to work on self. That's right. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Their whole taste buds are going to be different from yours. Yeah. They're going to roll that. They may say, mm, mm, break out in service. Ooh, what kind of stuff is this? This reminds me of Jack Daniels. If you hold the cup of wine in your hand and you lust for it, like you did in your past, you drank damnation to your soul. If you lust for it, even if you compare it to what you got from a state store, your mind ain't on the blood of Christ. Your mind is on liquor. Pastor Jennings, how can you say that? Because the Holy One advised us, let this mind be in you. That's also in Christ Jesus. You see how careful the Holy Ghost is laying groundwork? Oh, yeah. Come on, William. Second Chronicles 15 and verse 1. All right. And the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. Don't tell me you can't lose the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You ain't always had it. That's right. Look at the times. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. The Lord is with you while you're with him. And if ye seek him. If you what? If ye seek him. If you seek him. He will be found of you. And? But if ye forsake him. When you forsake something, you leave it. Leave it. But if you forsake him. He will forsake you. How much plainer can you make it? That's right. You leave God. That's right. He'll leave you. That Holy Ghost will uh, come out of you. He'll give you a chance to come back first. He'll warn you. He may move on a sinner. That's right. Get in the mouth of a sinner. The sinner don't realize what he or she is saying to you. That's right. And you'd be like, wait a minute. Man, that's, that's what my bishop used to say. God warning you. Get in the cab. Next thing you know, the cab driver say something. God warning you. And the cab driver don't even know the truth. It's true. Oh, the ways of the Lord are strange. That's right. Go back to Matthew. Back in Matthew 26 and at verse 21. Listen. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray Pretty me. Quick. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish. The same shall betray me. Everyone that took the Lord's Supper with Jesus wasn't with him. Yeah. He made it plain, one of you are the devil. That's right. That's, right. That's right. Come on, son. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. I told you. Hmm. You betrayed Jesus. How do he feel about it? The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. Have you left Jesus? Have you backslid? Backslide is when you depart from the faith. That means you no longer live by the rules and regulations to govern your holy life. That's right. You drop the commandment of God and lean to your own understanding. That's right. That's why people go to weak, false churches where the word of God won't be enforced. Mm -hmm. Won't be enforced. Amen. Have no respect for God, no respect for the rule of law. That's why some folk in first church mad with me because I won't change. If you get God to change, I'll change. And I'm telling you now, the Lord said I'm a God that changed not. That's right. Neither am I. That's right. I won't change to be your friend because I ain't seeking no friends. What? A friend we have in Jesus. <laughs> All our sins and griefs to bear. That's a friend. What <laughs> is to carry everything to God in prayer? <laughs> You that got that bottle, that's what you should be saying. And obey God and repent. And repent. Amen. Want God to be your friend, obey him. That's right. 
Look at you, you old drunk, cigarette sucking, pipe sucker, hip shaking. And here's God got mercy on you like a, here you are a fool. Never like the devil out of hell like it is no God. God wants you, Mr. Man. God wants you, Miss Thing. That's right. I keep telling you, God don't care how cute you are. If you got more curves than 85, 295, 495, 95, Route 1, in every neighborhood alley. When you walk down the street, cars can turn on this side and ride on your hips. When they plant you in the ground, all that stuff going to deflate. And at the appointed time, Mr. and Miss, you're going to stand before the great Jehovah. That's right. You better get this. That's right. And the Son of Man goeth as it is written of him. Come on. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if you he had betrayed him, you in trouble. Yeah. Well, Pastor Jennings, everything is going right in my life. Who cares? When a man put a contract out on you, things seem to be smooth until you get hit. That's right. Yeah. That's right. No one said, did God ever put a contract on anybody? Yes. Oh, yeah. Where you find that at? You'll find it in 2 Kings chapter 9 and chapter 10. Yeah. There was a man named Jehu, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him to kill all the house of Ahab. Had to kill all the house. He went as far as cutting folks' head off. Yeah. And when he cut their head off, he piled them up at the gate of the city. And then he came back and said, who cut these folks' head off? And he was the one who did it. That's right. God to put a contract out on you. Yeah. Nobody can outrun the Lord. Oh, please stop being a fool. That's right. Listen at this. But woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Uh -huh. Then Judas, which betrayed him. Then Judas, which betrayed him. Answered and said, Master, Master. is it I? <laughs> is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. You said it. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Jesus took bread, prayed over it. And break it. Then he broke it. And gave it to the disciples. He gave it to the disciples. And said, take, eat, this is my body. This is my body. And he took the Hold cup. Mm -hmm. Eating the bread. You're eating the body of the son of God. You're not digesting God. Because God is not natural. God is a spirit. That's why the very ingredients of the Lord's Supper points to Jesus' body. Bread for flesh, wine for blood. None of it points to the spirit. That's why it's not taken in heaven because the body was here on earth. Wonderful. Huh? Wonderful. Listen. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed as it. As they were eating, Jesus took bread and prayed. And blessed it. Uh -huh. And break it. <coughs> and gave it to the disciples. And real quick. And said, take, eat, this is my body. Now, hold it. Mm -hmm. I want to show you how the bread should be served. That's right. After I break it and serve it to you, you don't eat it right then. That's right. When I break the bread and give it to you. That's you don't right. eat it right then. In the book of 1 Corinthians. You see, you got to make all the scriptures harmonize. Yeah. All right. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and at verse 33. Follow me. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat. What should you do? Tarry one for. Go to verse above that. Verse 32. Come on, son. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord. Yes. That we should not be condemned with the world. Uh -huh. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat. When you come together to eat. Tarry one for another. Notice he didn't say when you come together to drink. No. You can't wait for each other uh, because I'm going to be serving it to you. Right. But when you get the bread, you got to hold it. Tarry. Wait. Right. Then I tell you. Eat this bread. That's right. 
Eat it. Take Jesus' flesh. Right. Eat it. That's when you right. do this, you show forth the Lord's suffering. That's right. Hold that and go back to Matthew. Back in Matthew 26 and at verse 26. Come on, Williams. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it. Yeah. And gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. This is my body. And he took the cup. Not the glasses. The cup. The cup. And gave thanks. He prayed again. And gave it to them. Gave it to the apostles. Saying, drink ye all of it. Drink all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament. This is my blood of the New Testament. Which is shed for many for the remission of, for of sins. Shed for many. <coughs> for the remission of sins. But I say... Come on, son. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of, of the vine. Yes. Until that day when I drink anew with you in my father's kingdom. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. All right, now let's get the book of Corinthians and get all of it. Now in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Are you getting this? Amen. Don't you make an attempt to sit in at that table. You got a second husband. That's right. You got a second wife. I want to say, well, Pastor Jennings, I'm repenting. That's good. 